Indigenous peoples across North America noticed something impossible. A plant appeared wherever Europeans walked. Not just near settlements, but everywhere their footsteps touched ground. Wagon trails, boot prints, compacted soil, as if the earth itself was reacting to invasion. They called it white man's footprint. This wasn't metaphor. This was literal observation. A plant following colonization like a shadow. But here is what makes this different. This plant wasn't an invader. This was medicine. So powerful that ancient physicians called it infallible. So valuable that pharmaceutical companies now synthesize it in laboratories. Except they're not selling you the plant. They're selling you a chemical copy of what is already growing in your lawn. While one industry sells you the copy, another spends four billion dollars a year convincing you to kill the original. This is plantain. The plant that witnessed colonization, the healer growing at your feet, and the nine billion dollar industry built on what it produces for free. To understand why this weed threatens the medical establishment, we go back to the year 40 AD. Pedanius Dioscorides, a Greek physician, is compiling what will become the most influential medical text for 1,500 years. He is documenting every healing plant across the Roman Empire. When he reaches plantain, he gets specific. Use it for wound healing. Use it for dog bites. Use it for burns. Not suggestions. Instructions. Thirty years later, Pliny the Elder writes natural history, and when he describes plantain, he uses a word Romans reserved for their most trusted remedies. Infallible. A remedy for bites from wild animals that never fails. This is 79 AD. This plant has pharmaceutical credibility older than Christianity. Fast forward 1,500 years. European monasteries cultivate plantain in their medicinal gardens, where monks grind the leaves into poultices for wounds. They make infusions for coughs and document results generation after generation, building empirical evidence that this plant controls infection and speeds recovery. Then comes the 1600s. Puritan colonizers arrive in New England with plantain seeds stuck to their boots and clinging to their belongings. The plant spreads explosively. Wherever Europeans walk, plantain appears within weeks, thriving in the crushed, compacted soil where nothing else can survive. Indigenous peoples notice immediately. They start calling it white man's footprint. But here is the part history often leaves out. They do not just notice it, they adopt it. Within years, tribes across North America are using plantain for wound healing, for snake bites, for drawing out infection, for healing burns. The exact same uses that Dioscorides had documented 1,600 years earlier, without ever reading his texts. This is independent validation across continents and centuries. By 1855, the plant is so embedded in American culture that Henry Wadsworth Longfellow writes an entire chapter about it in the Song of Hiawatha. Chapter 21, titled White Man's Foot. A plant that followed colonization across a continent had become a shared symbol of healing. Now let's talk about what this plant actually does, because Victorian folklore is one thing, but laboratory evidence is another. In 2017, Indonesian researchers tested plantain extract on rats with standardized wounds, measuring repithelialization, which is how fast new skin grows over an injury. The results, published in peer-reviewed journals, showed that plantain treated wounds healed 25% faster than the control group. Not 2% faster, not 5% faster, but 25% faster. In 2018, a pilot study in humans with indigestion had participants drink plantain leaf tea daily for four weeks. The result was that 67% showed symptom improvement. 
Two-thirds of participants found relief from drinking tea made from a plant that grows in sidewalk cracks. But here's where it gets interesting. Scientists didn't just observe the healing, they isolated the specific compounds responsible. What they found was a biochemical trifecta. First, arcubin, an antimicrobial agent that inhibits the growth of Staphylococcus and Streptococcus, the bacteria responsible for most infected wounds. Second, mucilage, a gel-like substance that soothes irritated tissue and reduces inflammation immediately upon contact. And third, allantoin, which is the real engine here. It stimulates cell regeneration and accelerates wound closure. This is what makes plantain heal wounds faster. Now pay attention, because this is where the story takes a turn. Pharmaceutical companies know about allantoin. They know it works, they know it heals wounds, they know it reduces scarring and promotes cell growth. So what do they do with this knowledge? They synthesize it. They create a chemical copy in laboratories, and the global allantoin market is now worth $4 billion, projected to hit $9.59 billion by 2034. You will find synthetic allantoin in wound healing ointments, in anti-aging creams, and in expensive scar treatments that line pharmacy shelves. The FDA classifies it as a Category 1 skin protectant, which means safe and effective, approved for over-the-counter sale. Cosmetic companies put it in moisturizers because it makes skin cells regenerate faster, and pharmaceutical companies put it in burn treatments because it accelerates healing. The entire wound care market is worth $23 billion, selling advanced dressings, hydrogels, foam bandages, and antimicrobial wraps. All products designed to do exactly what plantain has been doing for free for the past 2,000 years. But here is what makes this story perfect. While pharmaceutical companies are synthesizing Alentour to sell back to you, there is another industry working in parallel, an industry that spends billions of dollars to make sure you never discover the original source. The lawn care industry. Roundup sells products specifically targeting plantain. So does Ortho. So does Scott's. All sell herbicides containing 2,4-D, triclopyr, dicamba, and glyphosate. These are chemicals specifically designed to kill broadleaf plants, and their marketing message is crystal clear. Plantain is a weed, an invader, something ugly that ruins your lawn. But plantain is not invasive at all. It is actually a companion plant that thrives in compacted soil where grass struggles to grow. Its deep taproot breaks up hard pan soil and aerates the earth for other plants, and its presence actually indicates soil problems, making it a diagnostic tool that grows for free. And on top of all that, it's food. The leaves are edible, eaten raw in salads when they are young, or cooked like spinach when they are mature. Nutritional analysis shows 45.1 milligrams of vitamin C per 100 grams, which is 50% of your daily requirement in just a handful of leaves. It contains 108 milligrams of calcium, along with vitamins A, C, and K, plus iron, magnesium, potassium, and selenium. But more than nutrition, this plant is emergency medicine that you can use right now. Got a bee sting? Chew a plantain leaf until it is a pulp and press it on the sting. The mucilage draws out the venom, while the ocubin helps prevent infection. Cut yourself working in the yard? Crush a plantain leaf between your fingers and apply it directly to the wound. The natural allantoin starts cell regeneration immediately. Poison ivy rash? Make a strong plantain tea and use it as a skin wash. The anti-inflammatory compounds will reduce itching within minutes. This is why monasteries grew it, why Dioscorides documented it, and why Native Americans adopted it the moment they encountered it. Because it works. Not metaphorically, 
not symbolically, but chemically, measurably, and repeatedly. This plant produces the exact same compounds that pharmaceutical companies now synthesize and sell for billions of dollars, while simultaneously teaching you to kill it with herbicides. Here is what nobody tells you about plantain suppression. It is not accidental, and it is not about aesthetics. It is about market control. If plantain is classified as a weed, you buy herbicides, you buy wound ointments, and you buy scar creams. But if plantain is recognized as medicine, you simply walk outside and pick it, with no prescription, no patent, and no profit margin for corporations. The lawn care industry teaches you that plantain ruins grass, while the pharmaceutical industry sells you synthetic versions of what plantain produces naturally. Neither industry wants you to know that the plant they are teaching you to kill is actually more effective than the products they are selling you. This is why plantain identification matters, because this plant is literally everywhere. It grows in sidewalk cracks, driveways, parks, and lawns. Look for leaves growing in a rosette pattern at ground level, oval-shaped with distinctive parallel veins running lengthwise like guitar strings. You will see a thin flower spike rising from the center, with small greenish flowers packed densely on the stalk. Once you learn to see it, you will realize it is everywhere. Growing for free at your feet. White man's footprint. That's what Native Americans called it when they saw a plant appearing with colonization. But maybe the real story isn't about invasion at all. Maybe it's about witness. This is a plant that watched everything unfold. A plant that thrived in disturbed soil and healed the wounds of the people who brought it and the people who were already here. A plant so useful that it managed to spread across an entire continent in just a few decades. Now look at your lawn. Look at the cracks in your sidewalk. Look at that plant you've been taught to kill your entire life. That's not a weed. That's a 2,000-year-old pharmaceutical factory, a $9 billion industry growing wild. That's medicine that requires no prescription, no patent, and no corporate intermediary standing between you and healing. Next time you get a cut, don't reach for the ointment with synthetic allantoin. Pick a plantain leaf, crush it, and apply it. Watch what happens. That's not folklore. That's chemistry. The plant is still there, still working, still healing, right where it's always been, growing at your feet. Waiting for you to remember what indigenous peoples, ancient Romans, medieval monks, and every generation before the lawn care industry already knew. Some plants are too valuable to kill, some medicine is too effective to patent, and some footprints are worth following. If this video opened your eyes to what's growing right outside your door, make sure to subscribe to Nature's Lost Vault. Hit that like button and share this with someone who still thinks plantain is just a weed. They need to see this.